Hello and welcome to this Golden Jubilee series. Today is day nine. And tonight we are going to see a case of uh, echo emulsification, which was complicated by the occurrence of a PCR. And uh, so the lens decided to misbehave. How it was managed, uh, this is what is being presented today. So this is a patient who had a, about grade two nuclear sclerosis along with posterior subcapsular cataract. And uh, the surgery was begun by making two side port incisions uh, using a MVR blade. And uh, followed by injection of a bubble of air basically to protect the cornea and endothelium and staining the anterior capsule under the bubble of air. And as I usually do, I inject and blue from one side and I push it from the other side port basically to stain both the side ports so that location of the side port while making while entering with the upper is easier your the side port becomes more visible so once the trap and blue has been washed so HPMC viscoelastic is injected in the anterior chamber and using a spatula, I use the spatula to stabilize the eye and uh, the 2.2 retome is used to fashion the incision, which is slightly enlarged to a 2.4. Then this is the Gaurav Lutra's uh, capsular excess marker. It's always a good idea to use uh, a marker to know exactly where, how big your uh, capsular excess is going to be. And using a bent 26 gauge needle, which has been fashioned as a sister tome, the anterior capsular flap is raised and it is <clears throat> put over the anterior capsule. And this flap is rotated all around to give a circular anterior capsular opening. The spatula, okay. the spatula not only uh, stabilizes the globe, but also you can use it to uh, flatten the flap. <clears throat> so we've accomplished a central rexis. This is followed by the hydro procedure. I will try and uh, <clears throat> show you the part which is what we want, what we wish to discuss today, and that is the uh, occurrence of a PCR. So these things are all routine: uh, hydro procedure, rotation of the nucleus. Uh, removing the flap with the viscoelastic. And <clears throat> this is a 2.2 bevel tip, uh, bent 45 degree. You could tip with a flared opening. So, echo chop, basically vertical chop with uh, lateral separation. What is being attempted here? You can see that a good uh, crack was obtained. And the nucleus is uh, dropped into multiple fragments. And then each of these fragments is then uh, emulsified. So if you have a good uh, 
preparation of the various fragments, they tend to come into the fragment, uh, the FECO tip, it uh, becomes easier to emulsify. And, sorry, this is almost the last uh, piece. And this is where uh, we are always told that uh, one has to uh, reduce the parameters and uh, be careful while dealing with the last piece. And uh, I was probably not very careful. And uh, the PCR has already occurred. Uh, I haven't noticed it as yet. So I routinely inject viscoelastic from the side pod before removing the uh, echo tip. That is done as a routine in almost every case, uh, irrespective of whether there is a PCR or not. That is just to maintain the anterior chamber. And this is the bimanual irrigation aspiration. So I go in till I haven't noticed the PCR. And uh, suddenly now it becomes visible. So the hydration of the vitreous actually uh, broke the anterior hyoid. And now it is visible. The tricapsular end with the vitreous collapsing into the anterior chamber is visible. So, Again, injection of viscoelastic to the opposite side port before removing the irrigation handpiece. And uh, you have to ask your assistant to ready the vitreous. Most machines nowadays come with uh, anterior vitrectomy option. And it is a good idea to have a high speed cutter, at least uh, 2,500 cuts per minute. Uh, and it should be a guillotine cutter rather than an electric cutter. So the time that is being taken is basically to ready the cutter and prime the cutter. So now the cutter is uh, introduced in the eye and uh, in the area of the the rent, and uh, it is turned slightly uh, sideways. So as to remove uh, whatever vitreous that is collapsing into the anterior chamber. Suction on the vitreous should be as low as possible. I try to keep it at 100 uh, so that I am not actually pulling the vitreous uh, too much. It is just whatever is there in the anterior chamber is and uh, not prolapse, you know, you do, you do not uh, wish to bring more vitreous from behind into the anterior chamber. So, uh, we are also, we've also been told that you can use trapan, uh, you can use a triumphalone to stain the vitreous. Uh, <clears throat> at, at this point, or even when you feel that you've done a good to me and uh, you wish to check whether there is any residual uh, vitreous in the anterior chamber, you can use uh, amsilinone and uh, normally yeah, 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 Dr. Salab, you can pause yes. here. We can have some discussion at this point. Yes, yes sir. So, number one, why did you uh, observe the PCR so late? What was the reason for that? The reason was that uh, when I removed the FECO handpiece, uh, I wasn't able to... When, when, when you had taken out the last piece, yes. I mean, the PCR should have been visible at that point in time. Yes, but uh, somehow, somehow the PCR wasn't visible at that point in time. And... Uh, uh, it was only when I only when I introduced the irrigation aspiration. One 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 to ensure whether the p whether the PC is intact or not is to tilt the eye 
left or right, up and down, so that you get a good red reflex. And behind the red reflex, in the background of the red reflex, I think even small tears uh, can be probably identified. Yes. Is, uh, is, it, is it not so? Yes, that is that is very true. You know, I'm using an Omni Glow here. The Omni Glow yeah. actually gives you a very good red reflex. So, uh, even if you don't have an Omni Glow, even with a normal yes, you have the illumination. Normal. Yes, yes. By, if you tell yeah, the eye, yeah, yes, by you can, yes, you can. That is very true. You can yeah. see. You can yeah. see. Yeah. That is that is very very yeah. true. But uh, yeah. uh, here exactly. As you saw also that uh, when I removed the FECO handpiece, I put in viscoelastic, there was no tear that was visible. And even when I introduced the irrigation uh -huh. aspiration, even at that point of time, there was no uh, PCR that was visible. So uh, my guess is that it had occurred, but the flow of the fluid actually, you know, uh, caused it just open up and allowed the okay. anterior hyaloid to come up. So that is what my guess is. Right, right. So, right. Uh, you continue with the removal of the vitreous, yeah. and whatever is there. Yeah. And then using the uh, cutter itself uh, as a uh, you know irrigation uh, aspiration probe, you can also remove the leftover cortex that is there. Because once you've done your anterior vitrectomy, uh, whatever residual cortex that is there uh, ideally must be removed uh, because if you leave behind cortex, it is going to cause inflammation. Sometimes the cortex, you know, tends to uh, go back into the vitreous. What is, what, 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 what is the ideal parameter for doing the anterior vitrectomy? What you said, a cut rate of around 1000 to 1500 is ideal. Uh, 2500. Uh, vacuum. 2500. Vacuum or 100. 2500. Okay, right. A vacuum of 100. Yes. 2500. Yes. Okay, vacuum right. of 100 and I mean, a most, cut rate of 2500. Um, but most of these, the, the FACO machines, basically, anti segment people, yes, they have a, a cut rate of around 1600. Most of the machines. Now, so the newer is, version machines, they have. So, this is a, this is a basic flaw with the uh, machines, which. Uh, 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 what I know is that uh, the newer echo machines, like uh, the, uh, there's a machine which came after Constellation from Alcon. I'm forgetting the name of yeah. that. Uh, tabletop version of the Constella Constellation. Uh, that has yeah. 2,500. So basically, okay. unless, unless and until we uh, you know, get behind the surgical uh, people and tell them that this is what we want, and what they do normally is they push, you know, push their machines with lower parameters down our throats, uh, which is not the ideal situation. Uh, we should be able to be in a situation where we can okay, guide right. them. We want this, and they should make okay, machines. Right. They should make like machines this. which okay. make life easier for the surgeon rather than you know their. So, so it is always the higher cut rate which is important. Yes, which gives yes. you a fine cutting of the vitreous, right? Yes. And what you said, a, a vacuum of around 100, 80 to 100, isn't it? Yes. That yes. Is. And, what and, you, and what should be the bottle height? What should be the bottle height for that? Uh, if your if your machine is normal, normal if it's a gravity, normally film, what? If it's a gravity. Yeah. Film, if, if, no, I mean, ninety percent of the machines are gravity filled machines. Huh? Yes. So what I what I do basically, I reduce the bottle height to around 90 centimeters above the. The height of yeah, the eye. You can you should try and make it as low as possible without well, having yeah. a collapse of the globe. So you have to basically know right. what is the bot ideal bottle height in which your hundred vacuum of the uh aspiration Detectable will not aspiration. The, 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 when you are aspirating the vitreous or you are aspirating the cortex, if there is no collapse of the eye, means that at that point of time your uh, bottle height is ideal. So you, okay. One has to one has to uh, know uh, from machine to machine, and what you can see okay. is that I use the aspiration uh, of the cutter, bring the cortex nearer to the side port, and then I switch on the cutter so that the uh, cortex gets removed. So that is what I have done in almost uh, three sixty degrees. In this case. 
and uh, you can see that now it's a clean bag. There's no more vitreous in the anterior chamber. There's no prolapse uh, or viscoelastic going in the eye and then loading the uh, intraocular lens. At this point of time, I did not have a backup lens, a three-piece lens. So the lens that was originally meant for the patient is what is loaded. And a wound-assisted delivery is uh, being done. And I'm trying, my intention is to place the leading haptic into the sulcus. And uh, I'm using the spatula to try and guide the delivery of the leading haptic into the sulcus. But unfortunately, uh, I was paying more attention to the injection part and not to the leading haptic. Now, part of the IOL is in the vitreous. And uh, it was a good thing that I had this hapt out. But then I made an error in judgment. And I thought that I will dial this lens into the uh, above the iris. You can see that I am trying dialing it above the iris. And uh, I'm thinking that maybe the other pole will be able to prolapse into the uh, anterior chamber as well. So this is uh, what I should not have done. Now you will see me struggling. The AC is becoming shallow. You're getting folds in the cornea. Uh, this, this, this situation is uh, very precarious because this lens is ready to dive into the vitreous cavity. So you can see, I put in a little bit of viscoelastic and the lens deep down. Almost, almost diving. Almost diving into the vitreous. So uh, I'm trying to uh, bring this above the iris. Luckily, I have hold of this uh, lens because it's a closed haptic. Had it been a, a you know regular intraocular lens, holding it would have been even more difficult. difficult. Yes, yes. So the the, the closed haptic. Configuration actually is what uh, saved me uh, in not allowing this lens to go into the sulcus, into the vitreous cavity. So this was a this was a Renner lens or what? No, this this is a Kier uh, lens. Uh, yes, from an Indian uh, company. Yes, because because the Renner has this this design basically. Yes, the Renner has. C flex they call it. I think yeah. they, they call it the C flex lens. Yes. Yes. This is a three fold answer. Right. So, Salab, at this point, can you tell us the mistake that you committed? What what we can do to avoid this kind of a error? Yes, what we should so, do. So, uh, as I as I said, the error that I made yes. was that I started to inject the lens, and I did not. Uh, attention to the lens leading haptic of the lens I was not paying attention to the leading haptic I was paying attention to where I was injecting my, my, my attention was totally towards the injection part rather than the uh, so the, the, so leading, the leading part instead of going into the sulcus that went into the, the vitreous basically vitreous cavity through the PC rent yes okay right so at that point in time I have faced this kind of situation few on, on a few occasions. Uh, there is one instrument, Kuglan hook, which comes in very handy. So with that, with that, with the Kuglan hook, you can really catch hold of the the leading haptic, the optic at the optic haptic junction, pull it forward, and then pull it into the anterior chamber, and yes, then place so it. I was trying with the uh, Kuglan, I was context. trying with the Kuglan hook, uh, and then you know. In viscoelastic as the chamber was becoming shallower and the lens you know is you can see in my left hand i have the googling hook uh, the right hand i have a sinski hook which is basically keeping the lens uh, in the anterior chamber now uh, since the lens is uh, not going into the sulcus i have decided that you know one hat must come out because this will prevent it from going down now you can use uh, whichever instrument uh, you wish yeah. to prolapse the leading haptic which is already in the vitreous cavity 
to bring it above the PC red as well as the anterior capsular margin. Uh, so here you can see this is the cochlear hook and uh, now the leading haptic is being pulled and now it is above the iris. And then this is slowly uh, placed in the sulcus. So now it is in the sulcus. And then this trailing haptic is also now dialed uh, into the sulcus. Well managed. Ranjan, So now the uh, lens, is, lens is above the anterocapsular margin. And uh, situation is. Ranjan, ka critical comment. Shall I take yes, some sir. critical comment from Dr. Ranjan? Is... <laughs> good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. We will talk about the knowledge and wisdom here, which we will talk about later. Sir, sir, uh, I would like to say that I have visited my OT register of the last five years. And what I have noticed that I have done most of the rent in this month, only February. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I have visited it and most of the rent. Then I thought that probably January was too hectic and February we thought it is going to be relaxing. And it is some sort of burnt out to the surgeon. That could be the reason for the, this. No, no, no. Visit your machine. Just check your check the parameters whether the machine is functioning well or not. Because I had it faced is, a similar is, crisis a few months back. The aspiration of my machine was not functioning as per the required thing that I was putting in. And so once it was sorted out, I mean, a lot of things eased out. Uh, 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 I'd, I'd like to ask Dr. Salab. Yes. You have not, uh, uh, you have not used this transcanalone and how uh, you are, you got sure that there is no vitreous in the interior chamber. Yeah. Yeah, Salab. Yes. Transcanalone should have been used. Yes. So and normally, normally uh, in my, you know, set of uh, vitrectomy, a transloan is always kept. And uh, mm -hmm. usually in the cataract set also, there's a fresh transloan that is always kept. In this patient, unfortunately, that that particular day, I did not have a fresh transloan. Uh, it was an old one and I didn't wish to use it. So that is the sole reason why I have not used it. I'm here trying to do an optic capture. But... Uh, Somehow the rexus is... What are the, what yes. are the other signs of... What are the other signs that you, you are very sure that there is no vitreous in the AC? Uh, the other signs would be that, you know, your... Uh, uh, pupil should you know, be... The pupil should be constricted and uh, the... the should, pupil should, should be, be constricted. No, there should be no thinking of any uh, point at the side port or at the uh, level of the incision. If the if, the, if there is a vitreous wick, uh, there will be uh, picking of the pill at that particular point of time, uh, in, at that particular point. So if there Salab, is... Salab, Salab, I'll, yes. That will one thing, one, one thing I would like to suggest and know your view about, that even after putting the intraocular lens, you can take out the, the, the viscoelastic with the help of the Vitreous cutter, yeah. the yes, irrigating is, cutters. I mean, yes, that is what I was. That is what I was doing. Yeah. I was, if you I was, do that, I was keeping the cutter yeah. behind the lens. Yeah, exactly. That that. Yes. that you are going to clear the anterior. Yeah, the vitreous from the anterior chamber. Yes. So uh, here goes in uh, the intracameral moxifloxacin. I always uh, make the reclam a little loose, and then I inject the moxifloxacin so that it doesn't come out. So, uh, the, 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 the learning point here, uh, most important point is that whenever you are dealing with the last piece, uh, if you are uh, even if you are in a hurry, uh, if you have a long OT list, uh, 
be very very mindful of the fact that either you switch on to your epinucleus mode should be a mode like epinucleus or something in between the epinucleus mode and the segment <laughs> removal mode if your machine can be programmed in that fashion if it cannot and if you are not careful if you are not mindful uh, uh, I, I learned this tip from uh, dr subhash prasad uh, you know many years ago he had shown cr occurring uh, in the last fragment and uh, normally we know that he is a very busy uh, cataract surgeon has huge ot lists and he said that he has almost always used a spatula below the hand piece when he is removing the uh, last piece and i, I learned yeah, that tip from him. i also do the same yes. I yeah, learned that I tip from him, and I almost from always him. do it. So I in almost always do it. it. Here I was probably over. I, 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 I almost not. Probably here I was overconfident, and I you know thought that oh, it will be done. But uh, that is something that Sorry. we should not that we should not do. Uh, so that is the first learning tip. The other is that uh, uh, make sure that you always have your. Uh, Available. Make sure you always have the data available, and uh, it's your your assistant should be, uh, you know, trained. Yeah, no, no, an anti segment surgeon. Yes, but you know, even if you are an anti segment surgeon, you always have a vitrectomy uh, cutter with the machine. So make sure that your 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 uh, assistants know that if you ask for a vitrectomy machine, they are going to give it. as soon as possible because you are not going to waste any time between so 3 to 4 minutes or 5 minutes uh should be enough for them to fetch the cutter give it to the you know the person who has scrubbed and time it and give it to you yes dr parija yes you are you are a retina surgeon you have a setup of vitrectomy we are in the segment surgeon Where do we keep our vitrectomy cutter? Is it safe to keep that vitrectomy cutter in the formalin chamber, or we never, have to never, never? No, never. no, uh, Ranjan, it is very, very safe to keep the vitrectomy cutter in the formalin. No, no, no. Never. Using it for ten. No, 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 sir. Huh? I, I, I strongly, I strongly disagree. No, no, I strongly Why? disagree. I strongly disagree, sir. If you are, if you are, uh, if you are uh, friend with any vitreal surgeon. Uh, normally they always have uh, 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 an ETO yeah. machine so yeah. if you have a, if you have a pcr you've used your cutter just use just clean it properly dry it give it to your uh, vr friend ETO it and give it back to you if you have two uh, sets that's that would is more better more preferable but i am not use formalin chamber for anything formalin chamber Uh, is 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 a you know i have burned my fingers in men in a few patients and uh, it's many years now i i do not use formalin chamber at all and uh, i have an etio uh, and uh, this is what i even tell my other colleagues also if you are anywhere near me uh, just come and give your cutters to me and i will etio it free of cost because i am going to as well in any way i'm going to use my etio machine one cutter uh, can always be kept in the tray so have two vitrectomy cutters use one give it to your vr friend clean it properly give it to your vr friend and let him etio it it'll be there in that pocket if, uh you have pcr once in a blue moon it can be you know double pack no 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 i agree to the fact that if you must keep two two and what yes, do you suggest etio is a better option But, ETO is but, ETO. You must yeah. use ETO. Do not use formalin chamber at all in your operation theater. Uh, used to use for you know sutures, for cutters, for light types. Uh, no, no, I mean the only thing I have been using is the vitrectomy cutter, which I use in the which I keep in the formalin. Once at a blue moon, I have used. I have not burnt my finger with my past experience with that. But what you are suggesting is more scientific and 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 more correct. Yes. Ranjan, Ranjan will agree. What to do, Ranjan? Doctor Ranjan, what do you do? You keep it in the formalin or ETO it? I uh, I keep it in the formalin, sir. That's I, I, I'm also, yeah, 
but but what he suggests is a better option. If you have to, yeah. you must always yeah. because uh, we use it only once in a blue moon. So why why take a chance? Yes, yes, because you know, uh, the, even if a little bit of formalin is there on the cutter, it is toxic to the. Parijat, Parijat, kya karta hai? Parijat ko to salab ke bagal mein. What what he does? Just ask him. So gaya kya? Kaha tha? I will. I I just make sure that make sure that PC run doesn't occur. I was suggesting how to prevent, like uh, you said that uh, I use, you use spatula and everything, but uh, what I have uh, <clears throat> devised a method that hydro delineation, it leaves a thick epinuclear shell, epinuclear uh, cortical shell. So, that actually that helps a lot. It takes a it takes a bit of extra time to clear the epinuclear shell. Usually we do in grade two, grade three, but I attempt a hydro delineation. So sometimes when the nucleus is soft, uh, <clears throat> there are two to three layers of epinuclear shell which I have to remove later on. But that is that the time which I devote for removing that uh, epinuclear shell. Uh, the, that prevents actually uh, this uh, technique prevents PCR uh, and uh, rest other thing is that once uh, once in uh, 40, 50 or 100 cases uh, we do have a PCR but uh, I usually keep in formalin chamber and uh, I was not uh, aware of the fact about uh, we should not use or, uh, in the formalin chamber but uh, but I basically my experience with uh, uh, this uh, anterior vitrectomy is very less actually, and but usually if the rent is very big or some catastrophe has taken place, I refer it to VR surgeon only. No, that is true, but but most of the cat uh, in most of the cases we can manage it ourselves. The anterior segment surgeons can manage it. Small rent, I mean that is what happens. Even normally. if you have a 90... big, even if you have a big rent, then... you have cortex, uh, if you leave behind <laughs> cortex. <laughs> If you do a good anterior vitrectomy uh, uh, and remove uh, whatever cortex uh, you can, you make the life of a VR surgeon, the referring surgeon who gets your case, gets a cleaner case rather than a case where the vitreous is also there in the anterior chamber, cortex is also hydrated and in the anterior chamber or probably part of it is in the vitreous cavity. So uh, it is always a good idea to do as much of anterior vitrectomy and to remove as much of cortex as possible. Do not just leave it uh, and put in air and say, okay, uh, we are going to go to the right. You should All the anterior segment, no anterior vitrectomy very nice. They should be able to do anterior vitrectomy. They should know the, the technique of it. Right? Yes. And, uh, and, and you know, if, when your case goes to a VR surgeon, if you have vitreous there in the anterior chamber, if you have cortex there, it's going to cause inflammation. It is going to cause increase in the intraocular pressure. By the time the patient goes to a VR surgeon, the cornea is going to become cloudy. So then, because of the you, yes, and then the, the VR surgeon's job becomes even more difficult. So he has to then bring down the pressure, control the inflammation, and then take up the case for surgery. The cleaner the case, sooner the surgery, the second surgery can take place. The more exactly. serious and, and, and cortex you leave behind, the job of a VR surgeon becomes more difficult. So they may not say anything to you. Ideally, you should try and remove whatever vitreous and cortex that is there. Uh, if you can remove it uh, safely. And I showed you also that you should try and be in the region of the uh, PCR. Uh, whatever is there in the anterior chamber should be trimmed. Go a little bit behind the uh, rent and remove whatever vitreous is there. And then using the cutter itself, you can move uh, you know, the, the, the cortex, bring it as near to the side port as possible. Even some, even what you can do is hold it and bring it out of the side port. You don't have to... It just behaves like a paper tip. It, in, in fact, it behaves like a paper tip. Right? Uh, just, like so just like your aspiration tip. You Just like your aspiration tip. So yeah. uh, you can, you, you need not uh, chew it up or chew it up in the anterior chamber also. You can just use, you know, hold it and take it out of, out of the uh, side port. Just comes out, just strips out. So, and, uh, one, one, of my concern, 
one of my concern during anti anterior vitrectomy is uh, uh, what happens if the if uh, the PCR it enlarges due to irrigation pressure. So should we bring the bottle height down? No, no, bottle height should, as Dr. Pranav, you know, ask me that question. What is going to be your bottle height? So, yeah, bottle yeah. height, the bottle height, uh, uh, my machine has, you know, uh, gives you the pressure. So, uh, the height of the bottle is about 140 uh, when uh -huh. I'm doing Seiko, about 160 while I'm doing irrigation aspiration. But when I'm doing with anterior vitrectomy, the height of the bottle is 35. So, the pole is uh, programmed in that manner. It, uh, when I'm doing anterior technique, the pole automatically comes down. If you do not have a machine that has a pole, then you can, in your normal IV stand, should be brought down as low as possible. Sometimes the IV fluid, the IV, IV... In our machine, in our machine we, have, uh, we, have the, we have a motorized pole, but we have to uh, bring it down manually. Uh, we have to bring it down ourselves. It doesn't. It is not programmed to come down during anterior vitrectomy. Yeah. Um, so so um, programmed for, for other procedures, it is programmed, but probably but they have not programmed yeah. for. Which, yeah, which so machine you are what... using? I'm using Centurion, sir. Centurion must be having because I use uh, the Vizalis five thousand. It has. And it, it has. It has. Sir, it has, for, it has a irrigation aspiration for FACO, for uh, FACO chop for cordon removal. The height is yeah, there, but probably they have not programmed for anterior vitrectomy. You can get it because, just ask. Actually, yeah. uh, actually, many of these machines uh, they have an extra cost when you want a programmable uh, IV pool. So uh, that is why you know the cost. It, it, is, it is programmable. It is programmable. No, no, no. They have a programmable. The cost I mean... is there. Yes, probably they have not programmed for, for anterior vitrectomy. So they ideally should have, you know, uh, why they haven't probably. They should discussed. have. They should have. So they they might have missed your, because uh, you can discuss with yeah, your. Yeah. Their, uh, they, also they they will do it if, if he demands for it. Yes, ah, yes. they will do it. Will. So we ah. are going to uh, finish now. Uh, less less than a few, few seconds that, remaining. You wanted. Yes. Yes. Uh, you, yes. you wanted to say something. Was going to finish. Uh, what is your? What is your experience uh, regarding putting this hydrophobic IOL in the sulcus? Closed loop versus open loop. We were uh, discussing. We were we discussing this on Monday. Last, 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 last time we discussed, we discussed this. Discussed this on Monday. 